Hi, welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of The Bad Girl by Mario Vargas Llosa. So I've mentioned many times on this channel already that my husband is Peruvian, and he's been asking me for a long time to read a Peruvian author, and he specifically wanted me to read Mario Vargas Llosa, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature some years ago. I'd already kind of wanted to get The Bad Girl, and so my husband recently bought this book for me. He actually ended up reading it right before I did, and he assured me that I would love it. And spoiler, I did indeed love it. The Bad Girl starts off in Lima in 1950. There we meet Ricardo, or Ricardito, who is a teenager. And that's the summer that he meets these two girls, Lily and Lucy, who seem to be from Chile. He falls in love with the older of the two, whose name is Lily, and they seem to be going steady, but she keeps refusing him and turning him down and saying, no, I will not actually be your girlfriend. But then, towards the end of this summer, he finds out that she's not actually from Chile. Fast forward a decade, and Ricardo is now living in Paris, which was his lifelong dream. He's working as a translator, and while he's there, he ends up meeting this girl, Lily, again. She's no longer going by the name Lily, though. She's now known as Comrade Arlette, and she seems to be part of this revolution that's happening with aims of making Peru a little bit more like Cuba, and Cuba's recent political changes with Fidel Castro. However, she's not actually as political as you might think she is, and she's really just desperate to get out of Peru and live somewhere better, such as Paris, and ultimately have an easier, wealthier life. So from here, the book continues forward with Ricardo and the bad girl continuously coming together and coming apart as she keeps reinventing herself, going through different characters as she tries to climb her way up and attain wealth and a sense of security that she didn't have when she was younger. The bad girl, true to the title, continues to get herself into riskier and riskier situations and she keeps fleeing from one place to another as she keeps striving for this unattainable goal that she seems to have. In contrast, she calls Ricardo good boy and he really is more of a good, stable kind of character. He seems to really love this girl and he's willing to do anything, go anywhere to be with her. He tries to live a more normal lifestyle, just working as a translator and an interpreter and just living a nice, normal, middle-class lifestyle in Paris. However, with the bad girl in his life, that is going to be more and more difficult as time goes on. So there's a lot that I really loved about this book. I'll start off with the different locations that it's set and the way that the author describes these locations. The book begins in Lima, in the neighborhood of Miraflores, and I really like how the author described the different streets and parks and locations throughout the city, and specifically throughout this neighborhood. I actually lived in Lima, and specifically in Miraflores, for about a year, and I really like getting this chance to revisit this place that I once lived in. There's something really special about reading a book that's set in a place that you actually know really well yourself. He mentioned different streets, and I was like, I know these streets, I know these parks, I know exactly what he's talking about, I can envision exactly what he's talking about. So that was really fun for me. But then later, most of the book, the bulk of the book really, is set in Paris. And I've never been to Paris. It's definitely high on my list of bucket list destinations that I want to travel to. I definitely want to go there as soon as I'm able to. But he really does describe the city in such a way that you feel like you're there. He says specific street names, specific restaurants, bridges. You really feel like you're walking the streets with Ricardo, going to the same restaurants with him, eating the same food, seeing the same shows. It's really immersive and you can tell that the author has actually been there. And this kind of leads me to my next point, which is that The Bad Girl is a very international and even intercontinental book. It starts off in Lima in Peru, which is in South America. Then most of the book takes place in Paris and a little bit takes place in England. But then it also is set partially in Japan and even a little bit in Egypt and a little bit in Spain. These characters go all over the place, and it's really fun to go to these different locations and feel like you're traveling with them. Mario Vargas Llosa does a great job of making you feel like you're in these places, and not just in describing the, the cities, but also in describing the different kinds of personalities of the people that live there. Just as the book spans several countries and continents, it also spans several decades. It starts off in 1950, and it extends into the 80s. Ricardo is just turning 15 at the beginning, and by the end of it, he's in his mid-50s. So, based on that, you can tell that this is not a short, quick little love story. It's definitely something that expands for decades, and you can see how these two characters interact with each other and how the way they interact with each other and the way they treat each other kind of changes and evolves over time. You can see how neither one of them takes things very seriously when they're younger, but as they get older, they start to take things a little bit more seriously, especially on Ricardo's part. 
This book is very character driven, plot driven too, but very character driven in particular. I really like Ricardo. He's a very good person. He is called the good boy throughout. And indeed, he's someone who is reliable, responsible. He's very much in love with this girl, maybe even a little bit infatuated, or maybe has an unhealthy obsession with her. But he's a hard worker, and he just wants to live a quiet, nice, content life. But he's not just good, he's also a complex character. He has different layers to him, and you can see how he changes throughout the novel, and how he changes his response to the bad girl and her treatment of him. It definitely has different layers and nuances, and it feels like a very real person as opposed to a one-dimensional character. Likewise, the bad girl is also not a one-dimensional character. Yes, she is bad, and she does a lot of bad things, probably increasingly bad throughout the book, but again, she's also complex, and she has different layers to her. She has different background about why she behaves this way. But although she does treat people very badly a lot throughout the book, you can also see that she has another side to her that she tries to keep hidden away. Even as you can see how much she really grows to trust and care for Ricardo in her own way, you can also see how there are still sides of her that she wants to keep hidden, and she doesn't want to ever be vulnerable in front of him or anyone. On the surface, the bad girl has kind of a light writing style, and it might seem like a kind of fluffy and fun and quirky little book, but it also has a lot of deeper layers and actually heavier themes. Some of these heavier themes, and you can take these in content warnings by the way, but some of these heavier themes include abuse, mental health issues, death, suicide, and long-term illness. Although this book does have a lot of heavier themes, and more so as you get further into the book, it's still written in a way that feels kind of fun and light and quirky. I mean, there are certain scenes that kind of are tear-drinkers in a certain way, but even so, it still retains a certain kind of levity that makes it a fast read and makes it a fun read. I guess you could say it's a perfect balance between a fun, light, quick read and something that's a little bit heavier and more dramatic. And speaking of drama, it does get more dramatic as it works its way towards the end. That's when tougher themes start to arise, and that's also when you start to get answers about certain things as well. One other thing that struck me is that the narrator, or indeed the author, seems to be very cultured and well-read and just intelligent, and that really shines through in the writing. It doesn't come across as pretentious or like showing off knowledge, but you can really tell that this person has traveled a lot and is very well-read and knows a lot about, about politics and the arts. It really bolsters the writing. But again, it doesn't bog down the writing. The writing is still appealing, and I think anyone could enjoy this book. But I did enjoy seeing this different commentary in regards to literature and politics and other things like that. It adds to the story without really taking away from the main story. So I'm so happy to have finally read Peru's Nobel Prize winning author. I really enjoyed this book, and in the end, I gave The Bad Girl five stars. I really enjoyed this book, and I definitely want to read more from Mario Vargas Llosa. Currently, I'm eyeing his books The Dream of the Celt, Death in the Andes, and The Storyteller. But he has a lot of books, and so those are just a few that caught my attention, but I'll definitely have to go through his entire list and see what else catches my attention too. So I hope you enjoyed this book review video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss any more of my videos, please ring the bell to get all my notifications. I put out about two to three book review videos like this one every week, as well as one to two other videos every week. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!